Some people are a bit uneasy when they start getting hellos from everybody. everybody. That's a real problem. Yeah, Too yeah. friendly. St. John's is Canada's best kept secret. Yeah. And people are finally figuring it out. You know, one of the things when I did move back, I noticed, mm. uh, was the lack of good food. The tours and commercials are, are fake. They're, they're real. <laughs> and Come Home Here has just been a huge success. My name is Mike Wall, and I'm passionate about exploring health. Come on a journey with me across Newfoundland and Labrador as we learn about wellness here at home. <laughs> National Geographic labels Newfoundland as the foggiest place in the world, and we're not exactly easy to get to. But weather and location aside, we're quickly becoming a destination for people looking for a better way of life. And it's not just the capital city of St. John's that's attracting come from away. Take Bonavista, for example. It's hours away from the nearest airport, but it has everything its residents need, and it's still growing. Bonavista Town Mayor John Norman is passionate about making this remote way of living the new norm. Bonavista offers a, a unique type of rural living. It's, it's rural, but not too rural, may yeah. I say. Over the last few years, Bonavista has become quite a busy place. I mean, like most of rural Newfoundland, most of rural Canada, it was a decreasing population for a long time. I grew up here, I witnessed that. And over the past five, ten years, you've started to see a lot of new businesses open, a lot of new people, young people moving in uh, from not just other parts of Newfoundland, but from across Canada, from uh, European cities, from all over the world, really. So it's uh, quite interesting and adds quite a vitality to the town. Yeah, that's right. It's not just tourism here. Like, so people are actually moving here to, to work and sort of have remote workplaces. Can that, how do they do that in a smaller town? They are bringing their jobs with them. Some of them are entrepreneurs. They're manufacturing. They're opening up storefronts. Some of them are work from homers. They're accountants. They're architects. And uh, yeah, they work in their living rooms. They also work in uh, one of rural Newfoundland's uh, only uh, remote work share spaces which is called the Commons here in Bonavista. Any day of the week you can go in there now and you'll talk to a software developer that's working from here that's originally from Calgary or an architect from uh, downtown Toronto that now lives here. That's awesome. And you guys had an article in the New York Times sort of featuring just how special this town in particular is, right? Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a unique anomaly and it has a lot to do with the quality of life, the investments that the town um, and social enterprise and private business have made here over the past few years. There's a lot of focus on quality of life, on wellness, recreation, arts, culture, and that's really culminated in a quality of life that I don't think is really matched in most rural areas. There are a lot of amenities here that people are quite surprised with. So for the wellness side of things, there's got to be some benefits health-wise as well, living in a place like this. People, including myself, who have lived in more urban environments and have now moved back or moved here for the first time, your stress level tends to drop. Maybe not mine, as I have to run the place, <laughs> right. but uh, for most people, they find uh, a decompression happening when they come here. You're close to the water, you hear the sounds of the ocean, the gulls in the background. There's a slower pace of life and people absorb that. So I can understand why people from New York and Calgary and Toronto and other places would move in and find it far more relaxing and soothing to work in an environment like this. Mm. So what, what's the ultimate vision for, for Bonavista going forward? Continuing on the same path, mm -hmm. uh, the town making strategic investments in enhancing that quality of life. Down the road here is uh, soon to be the brand new YMCA Wellness Center. Cool. Uh, so we have uh, rural Newfoundland's first multifaceted holistic wellness center mm -hmm. that has Eastern health staff inside, uh, doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, dietitian, gym, yoga space, weight training, cardio, common rooms, community kitchen, all in one place. Wow. And of course, with a Bonavista flair, it's not a new building, it's yeah. a restored heritage building. It's an old high school That's that cool. we've uh, undertaken. And after millions in investments, it's uh, just about to open. It's funny, there's a saying, what, you want to be lonely, move to a big city. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, here you've got a small community, everybody knows everybody, I'm sure. And uh, it's yeah. probably a big shift for people that are moving here because they're not used to having that sense of community. You might not <laughs> even know the person living next to them, the next apartment. Some people are a bit uneasy when they start getting hellos from everybody. everybody. <laughs> it was even an adjustment for me <laughs> when I moved back a few years ago. Yeah. Everyone would say hello to you. Yeah. Uh, but 
it's quite charming and uh, it, it's really a friendly atmosphere and, and that's really warming to most people. Yeah. Uh, a little bit unusual to some, but they get used to it. They settle yeah. in and yeah, they there's, make a lot of friends. There's much worse things than somebody being friendly to you. Exactly. <laughs> that's a real problem. Yeah. Too yeah. friendly. What's the appeal to people when they come here to work remote or actually live here? It's the quality of life, yeah. uh, the affordability. You can come to a community like this, a uh, community of just under 4,000. You have year-round cinema, year-round live theater, music concerts, one night you can see opera or the symphony. Uh, the next morning you can go to the wellness center, you can go to the local coffee roastery to get your coffee. That night you can go to the martini bar. How many rural places in Newfoundland can you list off these types of activities? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. or you can have a fire on the beach because it's two minutes from downtown. Yes, and you can get back to nature and do all of that hiking, beach fires, boating, fishing. Yeah, it, it has pretty much a little bit of everything. I love Bonavista and what the community is doing to revitalize it. It truly has a little bit of everything and I can see why people will want to live there. Now, St. John's is a lot bigger city than Bonavista, but it's still smaller than places like Calgary and Toronto. So are people moving from big cities to small cities like St. John's? And if so, what's driving it? Well, the best way to find out these answers is to talk to the people that are helping newcomers with the transition. So I'm trying to figure out more about why people are coming to Newfoundland. Tell me about the real estate scene here. You guys are obviously doing a lot of work in this. Mike, lots of people are moving back home finally. The pandemic has given people a chance and an opportunity to work remotely. People are leaving big cities. People are seeing the benefits of living in St. John's, seeing that you know you don't need to commute to work. People have extra free time so they can enjoy the beautiful outdoors here. Mm -hmm. um, and also the price of homes here. It's less than half the national average. Right. And it's a great time for people to sell in big cities and capitalize on their robust markets and a great time for people to move home and enjoy St. John's. Just recently I met a client. Uh, they lived in Toronto their whole lives, 30 years. They said, it's time for us after this pandemic. We gotta get out of here. We, we see the East Coast, the living is different there, and uh, we decided we're moving anywhere in Newfoundland. We're checking out Eastern, Central, Western, and deciding where we want to move. But we need to get out of Toronto, we're sick of the rat race, and we want a new atmosphere altogether, and East Coast living looks great. Yeah. Do you think that uh, some of it has to do with uh, the health side of things, like people coming back for a better quality of life? Definitely. We have 15,000 kilometers of coastline, and you know we have a beautiful scenery here in St. John's. And, uh, you know, our population is very, very small, so we don't have a whole lot of pollution. We have big land masses. St. John's is Canada's best kept secret, yeah. and people are finally figuring it out. Yeah, it's definitely like I think about St. John's and the fact that, you know, you can almost work from anywhere now. So a lot of people, I think that you weren't really confined by having to commute somewhere and go to a skyscraper. A lot of people still keeping their old jobs and then working from here now. Absolutely. I mean, with the pandemic, it's forced people to be able to work at their home. Uh, we had there was a long period that there were shutdowns in larger cities and many employers are giving people the flexibility that they can work home permanently. So now it seems that people are taking advantage of that and they're moving back home. And oftentimes people who aren't Newfoundlanders are seeing the benefit of living in Newfoundland and they want to leave large cities that are very expensive. And they're moving not just to St. John's, but they're moving to rural areas. They're moving to the outports. Um, for a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars, they can get houses ten times bigger than they're used to in a large city. Right. So um, they love the pace. They love the fresh food. There's fishermen on the docks giving people fresh cod. It's it's just a completely different lifestyle. Yeah. In the city or outside the city, it's like the the huge networks of trails, uh, the different restaurants, the different fields. You can't get that anywhere else in Canada. The East Coast, especially Newfoundland, just has that vibe. Yeah. And I know we're biased because we're from here, but I've had so many clients and friends that lived away now, they've had the big house, they're cashing out and come back here mortgage-free and just enjoying life. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Robbie, you got a big family. So, I mean, for you, you're busy, but is it living in a place like this easier for somebody who's trying to balance everything when it comes to career and family? Your yeah, work-life balance in St. John's is the slower pace instead of the bigger cities. You know, everybody knows everyone and everybody's very much a community. And it's just a very uh, safe environment. It's so exciting to see everyone move back now and just see people move back after 20 years and say, wow, this is where I want to be. This is where our kids are. and this is where life should be. I have a lot of clients that were friends uh, that are moving back from Ontario after 20 years. And most of my, my friends and, and peers that I went to school with, they're living over an hour commute from where they work in the city. 
So people are, aren't living in the, the downtown of Toronto. They're living an hour and a half, an hour from, from where they work, and they're spending two to three hours every day commuting to work. Yeah. So in St. John's, it's, we, we complain about 10 or 15 minutes of traffic. Yeah. So we, we don't have a commute. Yeah. So people have three hours extra per day that they can go to the gym, that they can get in a hike, that they can do some sightseeing, that they can cook healthy food. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot extra time when you think that you work an eight hour day typically, but you add three hours of commute time. That means you have 11 hours just to, to involved with your work day. Yeah. So it doesn't give you a lot of extra time to spend with your family, to, to get in healthy lifestyle activities. Newfoundland's always been a safe haven for sailors during the storm, and the same's true for challenges in our life. When tragedy struck Jennifer LePage's family, she turned her sights home, and she brought with her a taste of the big city. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes, this looks great. This restaurant is gorgeous. How long have you had it for? I've been open now just over a year. Wow. It's incredible. And you came back home to open this restaurant, right? Like you, you were living overseas for a while? So I'm from Newfoundland. I yeah. grew up at around Placentia Bay. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful, beautiful spot. Yep. And uh, I met my husband, um, who's, who was French, uh, here in St. John's. <laughs> And, uh, you know, everything is wonderful and all of a sudden you pack up and you move to France and I had um, four beautiful children then and uh, unfortunately he passed away and that was really, really hard and even though I had spent my, basically my whole adult life in France, I wanted to come home. I wanted to come home. I wanted to, um, for my children to have the same type of family and closeness and cousins and neighbors and I wanted them to have that and you know when my family structure kind of it fell apart it was really the best thing to do and the most sensible thing was to pack up everyone once again and mm -hmm. and come across the pond as my dad says right yeah, yeah. right come back home and come back home and when I think about like what's been happening lately is I think people are starting to recognize the value of being in a place that's like home. People are moving back and they've sort of reevaluated their lives, whether they've had personal circumstances like yours, which of course are really traumatic, or just COVID itself, you know, have made people rethink things. Why do you think people are coming back to St. John's and Newfoundland? When you've lived somewhere else and, you know, you have the big city life and it's, it's, it's great, but when you want your family to grow and develop a certain way, Newfoundland just checked all the boxes for us and mm -hmm. to have family again so close and you know my neighbors who are now my best family like I don't know they're more than friends I call them my best family because they're our go-to they're really our um, they've given us a lot of structure and comfort right we've been able to to grow as a family and everyone is doing really well and you know maybe we still would be doing well if we had to stay in France yeah. but to come back to Newfoundland, I've certainly seen that, you know, we're all shining. Yeah, yeah, and you, you mentioned, you know, family, but also for business. I mean, you guys have done really well here as this business, so what are the opportunities for people to come back with ideas? You know, one of the things when I did move back, I noticed, mm. uh, was the lack of good food. Yeah. There's, um, we, in Newfoundland, we go a lot. There's a lot of activities for our children, and it's, uh, constant running through a drive through here or a drive through there and for me in France one of the things that we always enjoyed was sitting down as a family yeah. and enjoying a good meal and that was always fresh and I wanted that so you created it yourself I made it myself <laughs> right I did well yeah it's good that we're starting to get some healthy habits things like uh, healthy food restaurants and things like that coming in how is it being an entrepreneur and being a business person here versus say being in a bigger city when you got access to some of those uh, like things like nature that are around us like does that help keep a balance in your life oh my goodness yes very much so it's um you know when I first started looking at this location and trying to figure out where it was gonna be, I would walk the trails. Mm -hmm. I would walk the trails, and that's how you clear your mind. You know, you, you're not gonna to listen to a podcast. You're not gonna, you're just gonna walk, listen to your feet, or if you're in the winter, that crunchy snow sound, which is amazing. Yeah. And it just, it just brings you back to your roots and who you are, and you know, it, when you're trying to do a, to create a business and to develop, you 
you put your heart and soul into it. And for me, it's very important that I try my best in everything that I do. But to do that, I need to be well. Yeah, right. I need to be extremely well. And that's, you know, from exercising to going for a walk at the end of the day, mm -hmm. to just going over to my neighbors in their back garden and they have a fire out there and having a little chat, right? Sense, it's yeah. some of those things, most of those things, you can't get them in the big city. And it's, um, we're very lucky here in Newfoundland. Here we are. It's great to see people like Jennifer coming home with the goal of bettering their community. The transition from big city to small town has been made a lot easier because of technology, and online platforms make wellness more accessible. So I'm taking advantage of this technology, and I'm meeting up with an old friend to find out why he encouraged all Newfoundlanders and Labradorians to come home this year. That was a good workout. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Basically, it takes away every excuse to miss a workout now. Yeah, there's no need. Yeah, I know. Well, you're a big fan of working out. You're always being active. Why do you Why do you think that's such an important thing in your lifestyle? Uh, for me, it's really important for my mental health. Um, mm. I noticed in my surgical training and then into my operative career, I had to work out in the mornings to clear my head and then to start the day. And now in this job, you don't always get to go to the gym, but there's no reason not to throw a pair of running shoes in the bag, and uh, there's plenty of kilometers of roads in this province to run. <laughs> yes, there are. They are. And we are really lucky. And I guess, you know, you're a huge advocate for the province. So, you know, what are some of the things that stood out to you when you've been across the province seeing everybody? Oh, I mean, you know, there's the obvious the landscape, the vistas, the uh, incredible mountains, and, and my beautiful district of Hummer Gross Morn. Mm -hmm. um, and there's the diversity of the different geography and landscapes that uh, are truly uh, unique uh, when it comes to Canada, really, and, and around the world. But I think, you know, what really draws people to the province, what really makes us special is, is the people mm -hmm. and the people in the communities. It's the heart and soul of who we are in these rural communities. Um, it really makes you uh, feel lucky to be a part of, uh, of a community that has a true sense of place and a true sense of belonging. And I think that's what makes us Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, and it's what makes others want to be Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. That's true, and you know, we've been all over the province, Newfoundland and Labrador, and we've got to meet those people, and it is a really special place, and I think it's also a really special place for people to have families, and you've got three kids, and yeah. you know, your, your wife is a physician as well. Why is it such a good place for families to be here? I think it's a perfect place to raise a family. I mean, I was born and raised here, uh, but the opportunities to have a good work-life balance, uh, uh, to raise kids in a safe, uh, productive, uh, inclusive environment, um, mm. you know, is, a, is, a, is something that we take for granted, mm. uh, frankly. And, and when you get to travel to other cities across the country, you know that, you know, what we have here is truly special. Mm -hmm. And when you talk to people, for example, in downtown Toronto, or you don't even have to go to Toronto, in, in Halifax, and, and you talk about how long they wait in traffic, mm -hmm. for example, that's an hour or so every day. Like, who wants to do that? Yeah. You can spend that hour with, with your kids. You can spend that hour with them talking about their day or taking them to an activity that they can be exposed to. Newfoundland and Labrador has everything that anyone would ever need and more uh, in that balance and yeah. uh, and that healthy respect for the outdoors and there's great activities for the outdoors uh, for people who are so inclined and uh, I think it just has an incredible opportunity and and immense untapped opportunity heading into the future. That's right and a lot of things have changed here and you've been encouraging people through the come home year that have yeah. been living away to come back and see what's going on here in the province. How did that go this year? Oh, it was fantastic. I mean, uh, we're seeing record numbers of tourism yeah. uh, of tourists here in the province, and it, it, I think it's going to be a banner year. It, it, we're expecting almost 20% uh, more than 2019, which was the best year of tourism in the province ever. So, come home year has been a resounding success. I mean, you know, the numbers speak for themselves. But uh, in my travels around. Uh, the province this year to different communities to see them come alive with the spirit of the community that mm -hmm. you know we haven't seen partially because of the pandemic but you know some of these festivals have been withering for a while and needed a, an infusion of cash but mm -hmm. also needed an infusion of spirit and to see those small communities come alive with people from around uh, Canada and around the world was really invigorating for me and uh, for example we were in Conch you yeah. know a, a community of 
normally 60 people or so and we walked into a garden party come home near a garden party accordions going fiddles going it wasn't a show for me it was one that they were putting off yeah. you know everyone having a great time two to three hundred people blue star going it was great perfect. it was just it was a perfect tourism commercial but yeah. <laughs> but tells you that the tourism commercials aren't aren't fake they're, they're real <laughs> and come home here has just been a huge success when you're talking to people from a way that may have been a newfoundland or labradorian that are contemplating coming home or somebody who lives away and might want to move here, what would be your pitch if you were to give them an elevator pitch? Uh, well, why would you spend an hour in traffic in downtown Toronto to yeah. do a job on a computer when you can do it uh, here with an incredible vista in the background mm. and be able to stroll out in a safe environment to, to get a coffee mm. uh, without, the worry of, uh, without the worry of exhaust from cars, without the worry of violence? It's a perfect place. Uh, yeah. And I think we all collectively as human beings took a step back during the pandemic mm -hmm. and reevaluated what's important and that balance is important and Newfoundland and Labrador has what is needed. If you're on Bay Street today, you can work anywhere in the world. The pandemic proved it. Yeah. Newfoundland and Labrador is a great place to do that. That's right. You take those conference calls in the Adirondack chairs on Signal Absolutely. Hill. Absolutely. <laughs> For decades, the population of Newfoundland and Labrador has been shrinking. But in light of the last few years, I think there's a growing appreciation for our home. Despite the gray weather, we're home to a vibrant and unique culture. The welcoming nature of our people make it a place where community is a priority. Of course, living on an island or up north has its challenges, but Newfoundland and Labrador is a welcoming and beautiful place to live, especially when we're surrounded by people who are putting in the effort to make it even better.